Good morning students. We are learning water resource engineering and hydrology. We are discussing on dams and reservoir where in previous lecture we have discussed about reservoirs, its type, the investigation and the site selection for the reservoir. Now in today's lecture we will discuss further about reservoirs. So starting the lecture with the topic zones of storage in a reservoir. Well, uh, the reservoir is uh, not actually divided, but it has uh, different different zones and few levels. So let's discuss about those levels. For that, first of all, we need to see how the reservoir looks like and how it is distributed. So this is the reservoir. Well, here, here this reservoir is divided or uh, it has been distributed in few zones. Well, first of all, discussing about the levels, the first that is the normal pool level, maximum pool level and minimum pool level. Well, the normal pool level is the maximum elevation to which the water will rise in the reservoir during the ordinary operating condition. So that level or that elevation is known as the normal pool level. Well, uh, in the case of ungated spillway, the normal pool level is corresponding to the crushed level of spillway. But in case of spillway with gates, the normal pool level is taken as the top level of the spillway gates. Well, sometimes this uh, normal pool level is also known as the full reservoir level. Okay. Now, uh, let's see the minimum pool level the maximum pool level now we'll discuss about maximum pool level so it is the maximum elevation to which the water surface will rise in the reservoir during the peak flood time and it is sometimes known as the maximum water level also or pool level during the design flood well the minimum pool level is the lowest elevation to which the water is drawn from the reservoir under the normal condition. This label is fixed by providing the outlets in the dam, such as we can say the sluice gates. So, uh, in the case of uh, hydroelectric power generation, the minimum head is essential. And so, the water level of the reservoir should not drop below the minimum pool level otherwise that efficiency of power generation would not be maintained so at such type of reservoir where it is purposefully constructed for the electric generation at such place this minimum pool level indication is necessary well now talking about the different zones of reservoir we have useful storage zone surcharge storage, dead storage, bank storage and the well storage. Well, starting with the first that is the useful storage. Well, the volume of water that stored in the reservoir between the normal pool level and minimum pool level that is known as the useful storage. Here you can see that difference between the normal pool level and the minimum pool level that is known as the useful storage. It can be used for various purposes such as the irrigation purpose or water supply or it may be used as the uh, power generation or sometimes it useful for the fish development or fishery purpose. The second is the surcharge storage. Well, the volume of water that stored between the normal pool level and the maximum pool level that is known as the surcharge storage. Well, surcharge storage is an uncontrolled storage as it exists only while a flooding is occurring and it cannot be retained for the later use. So, when uh, there is an alarm for flood, so at that moment the water that is 
stored in the reservoir that we can consider in the surcharge store so the volume of water that is stored between this minimum pool level and the maximum pool level that is known as the surcharge storage okay the next that is the dead storage well the volume of water which is stored below the minimum pool level is the dead storage of the reservoir so this water also cannot be used for any purpose as it is a very below level so the water is not used in any purpose under ordinary operating condition because whenever you are constructing a reservoir there should be some minimum amount of water so that you can use it for the further purpose but when that level of water get below the uh, dead uh, below the minimum pool level okay at such place that storage become the dead storage because you cannot use it for any other purpose the next that is the bank storage well when the reservoir is filled up the certain amount of water sips into the permeable reservoir bank and this water comes out as soon as the water level in the reservoir get lowered so this volume of water is known as the bank storage and it may amount to several percentage of the reservoir volume that depend on the geological formation of the reservoir well the bank storage effectively increase the capacity of the reservoir above that indicated by the elevation capacity curve so this bank storage cannot be uh, mentioned or cannot be shown through the figure but we can say the uh, bank storage is a kind of water that we can utilize when the uh, actual water level getting lowered okay now the last one that is the well storage well the minimum volume of water which flows through a river before the construction of dam that is known as the well storage so well to understand the well storage after the reservoir is formed okay the storage will increase and the actual net increase in the storage will be equal to the storage capacity of the reservoir that will be subtracted from the natural well storage so the well storage does reduce the effective storage capacity effective storage capacity of a reservoir okay so these are the zones of storage in the reservoir now let's uh, talk about the yield of reservoir well talking about the yield a long a long range of runoff from a basin is known as the yield of that catchment or we can say the reservoir well generally a period of one year is considered for determining the yield value so the total yearly runoff expressed as the volume of water that entering the outlet point of the basin and thus it is known as the catchment yield so now let's discuss about the yield for the reservoirs the first that is the reservoir yield so the yield is the volume of the water which can be withdrawn uh, from the reservoir in a specified period of time okay so the amount of water that can be drawn from a reservoir in any specified time interval is the reservoir yield naturally it depends upon the inflow into the reservoir and the reservoir losses the time period for the estimation of yield is selected according to the size of the reservoir and the time interval may vary from day for a small distribution reservoir to maybe the year for the more large storage reservoir well the next is the safe yield or we can say the firm yield well, safe yield is the maximum quantity of water which can be supplied during a critical dry period generally the lowest recorded natural flow of the river for a number of year is taken as the critical dry period for determining the safe yield however there is a possibility 
that a drier period may occur with a yield even less than the safe yield determined on the basis of the past records. Now, this factor should be kept in mind while fixing the safe yield. This safe yield is the guaranteed yield as it is available from the reservoir to the users because uh, this uh, maximum quantity of water which we are supplying during the dry period or the critical period. So that should be a guaranteed yield. Well, secondary yield is the quantity of water which is available during the period of high flow in the river when the yield is more than the safe yield. Well, hydropower may be developed from such secondary yield is sold to industries at the cheaper rates. However, the power commitments for the domestic purpose or the domestic supply should be based on the firm yield. Talking about the average yield, the arithmetic average of the firm yield and the secondary yield over a long period of time is called as the average yield. While talking about the design yield, the value of the yield which may be adopted for the design of a reservoir that is known as the design yield. The design yield should be such that that the demand of the users are reasonably met with and at the same time the storage is not unduly depleted or reduced. However, the value of the design yield also depends on the urgency of the water needs and the amount of risk that involved while you are satisfying that need. Well, generally a reservoir for the domestic water is planned on the basis of the firm yield. On the other hand, a reservoir for the irrigation may be planned with a value of design yield about 20% higher than the safe yield or we can say the firm yield. So these are the yield that is uh, kept in mind or we can say that is very important whenever you are designing the reservoir or you are planning the reservoir. So these are the yields and also we have discussed about the different different storage and levels of the reservoir. Those are minimum pool level, maximum pool level and normal pool level. And if we talk about the zones of storage, we have discussed about useful storage, then dead storage, surcharge storage, bank storage and the VLA storage. Okay, so you must have to keep this in mind. This both are the important topic that can be asked in the exams. Okay, I hope students you understand this both the topic thoroughly. So uh, we are keep till uh, for this lecture. Thank you so much for your kind attention. We'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.